In this video, I'm going to show you how to submit a tax return in Germany using Wundo Tax. Hey friends, my name is Essen. As an expert living in Germany, the topic of tax return or Steuer Erklärung in Germany has always been a confusing one for me, as it can be very complicated for those people who do not speak the German language very well. No need to worry, in this video, I'm going to take you step by step on how to submit a tax return using Wunder Tax. Along the way, I'll be also sharing some very important tips to optimize your tax returns. A 5 euro discount for all those who are first time users of Wunder Tax. Some important information first. Not everyone has to submit a tax return but for most taxpayers in Germany it's still worth it to submit one voluntarily here's a list of all those who are required to file a tax return there are also special conditions that lead to a mandatory tax return that are not easy to define in that case you will receive a letter from the tax office informing you that you are obliged to file the deadline to submit a tax return for those who are obliged to file one is the 31st of July the following year. If you're filing voluntarily, there is no deadline and you can file retrospectively up to four years later. Since 2018, taxpayers do not have to automatically submit proof while filing their tax claims. However, there is a requirement to hang on to all of the receipts in case the tax office requires proof for specific entries. The most important document that you need for filing your tax return is called the loan Steuer Bescheinigung. This document you might receive along with your payslip for the month of November, December or January. If you do not have this document, then you probably have to ask your employer for it. If you had multiple jobs last year, then you should have at least one from all of your individual employers. If you're liking my content so far, don't forget to hit the like button. All right, to get the five euro discount, you need to go to snfinance.wundertax.com. I'll put a link for that in the description below. Once you sign up, you'll have to verify your email address. The whole process should take around about 20 minutes from start to finish. Generally, there are seven sections that you need to fill out, but it can increase depending on the claims that you have. First comes the personal data. Here you select the text here, then your first name and last name. After that is your date of birth. Then you write down your current home address. This is the address where you are living right now. If you had multiple addresses in the previous year, Simply select the current address. Then comes your tax office. You can select from the drop down menu. And here is a very big list of all of the finance armed or the tax offices related to where you live. Then you fill out the religion. If you're not obliged to paying church tax, then simply click that option. Otherwise select whichever is appropriate. Then is the family status. If you are married, single, permanently separated, you can select whatever option suits you. Here I'm going to select single and then I'm going to click save and continue. Next comes the income option. Here you have multiple options. If you are an employee or had another mini job besides your main employment, you can select that. So in order to get started with the income section, simply click I received an income as an employee or I received an income as a mini job. If you did not receive any income, then you can skip this section. In occupation, you write down the title of the job. It can be an engineer, Wissenschaftlicher Mitarbeiter, anything. Then, as I mentioned before, you need the loan to Bescheinigung and the loan to Bescheinigung looks something like this. It has multiple columns. The left column has some information written on it and on the right columns you have the euro amount. So this is the information that we are going to fill in the next option. First comes the Steuer class. You have an option of multiple Steuer classes and if you had multiple Steuer classes within the same year, simply select the last one. For example, if you had tax class one for the first three months or four months and then you changed it to tax class number three in the latter part of the year, then here you're going to select tax class three. Then we are going to fill out all of the information from your loan Steuer Bescheinigung to the corresponding columns. So whatever was written in the loan Steuer Bescheinigung line number three, you simply fill it out here. Simply see the column number and write down the number which is corresponding to the column number in your loan Steuer Bescheinigung. Most of the people do not have any data filled in the fields number 17 to 21 and 29 to 32. But if you have something, simply click here and those columns will emerge here. Simply put the information here if it is available in your loan store Bishanigo. Now, if you had multiple jobs within the last year, you can click on add another employment. You can fill in the information there. Now, if you had a second job alongside with your first job, chances are that it might be taxed in tax class number six. If yes, then select that. Otherwise, select the appropriate tax class. And then the process is same for this one as well. Most students generally get multiple jobs in a year. So as a student, 
you'll need all of the loan store bescheinigungs from all of your employees even if you had worked for them for a month or two if you are self-employed you need to click here and then provide the information that corresponds to your self-employment i'm not going to cover self-employed in this video so if you want me to make one let me know in the comments below after that if you have any other income sources for example from outside the country other unemployment benefits parental allowance insurance capital contributions voluntary work anything at all you'll need to mention that income here here i'm going to show you as an example if you had any capital gains if you had any gains from your stocks or cryptocurrencies this is where you need to fill out that information if you used a german broker then at the end of the first quarter a tax document at the end of the first quarter you'll need that to fill out this information if unfortunately you did not use a german broker then it's going to be a little bit complicated and it depends again on which broker you used and how they are handling your taxes as i said if you used a german broker for example trade republic or scalable capital you'll receive a document similar to your loan store where you'll have different columns on the left side there will be some information and on the right side your amount you write down whatever matches your tax certificate here you can put in the amount from your tax exemption order if you used it, if you filled it out to the 801 or 1602, write down that amount, but it will be written in your tax certificate, whatever it is, write it down here. Then your capital gains from foreign earnings, capital gains tax that you've already paid, the solidarity tax that you've paid and the church tax if applicable. Then if you want to add foreign taxes, you can add them here. And if you had made any income from life insurance that comes here as well. Have a look in detail if you have any other eligible Another thing would be if you have any capital gains from cryptocurrencies, so you write them down here. You can see that income from private capital transactions such as cryptocurrency trades or sale of gold, painting assets that were owned for less than 365 days are taxable if the income earned from it throughout the year is more than 600 euros. Negative gains that occurred within one year can be accredited towards your capital gains profit. If you had a profit of less than 600 euros, then you won't have to pay any taxes. But if it was more than 600 euros, even a single cent, then this will be taxed based on your tax class. As mentioned here, you can also offset your losses if you have realized any. So from the drop down list, you need to select whatever cryptocurrency or other asset you have. And then you need to write down the date of purchase, the purchase price and date of sale, current value and the income related expenses. You'll need to fill out this information for every individual cryptocurrency. Make a calculation for all of the Bitcoin that you sold within that year, all of the Ethereum, all of Cardano, etc. Then you can put in the sum of all the profits that you got from an individual crypto within a new entry. Once you've done that, you can proceed to the next section. At the end, you have an option of carrying forward losses, which is called Furlus Fatrag. It is very useful for students. I've discussed it in detail in the video here. Just select this option and simply write down the amount that you're carrying from the previous years. After that, click save and continue. Next comes the most important part and that is the expenses. Here we show what were the expenses related to our job or our studies which we can claim in our tax return. If you had any job search related expenses you need to click here. Now these expenses include passport photos, photocopies, binders, postages, anything at all which was related towards your job search. Here you can put in an amount that was actually uh, if you need more information simply click more info then if you are paying any contributions to your university association you can put it here after that is any seminars or additional tuitions that you take in most employers provide their employees with some sort of vital building in but if the employer is not providing you with these costs or if the employer is not providing you with any additional training and if you had paid this amount from your own pocket then you can claim that amount in this section next comes the contribution towards a tax consultant some people don't some people use them every year some use them when they are having a complicated year so if you had used a tax consultant in the previous year you can write down the contributions that you paid to that professional association here an interesting thing is if you are using any tax consultant tax software or any tax literature you can even adjust those costs in your tax return for example if you use wunder tax in the year 2021 to declare your tax return for 2020 you can declare this amount in your tax return for 2021 in the year 2022 so essentially this 
fee is going to be returned to you as it is if you had any work related insurances for example service liability accidental insurance etc you can put it by simply clicking here write down the description and write down the cost if you have multiple insurances simply click new entry and then provide those details there after that we have the communication costs the tax office accepts maximum of 240 euros in a year you can put in the maximum value or whatever amount that you paid for it after that you can put in the bank management fees most people generally pay five euros or more per month however there's a maximum of 16 euros per calendar year if they accept it or not there's still no guarantee once finished click save and continue if you're liking my content so far don't forget to hit the like button the next part is the works or steady item costs if you have expenses that are less than 110 euros you can put in a kind of lump sum there's no guarantee if the tax office submit accepts it or not and if your equipment costs more than 110 euros untake this option here and put in the individual entries these entries can include a computer laptop mobile phone, software, professional job, research study related literature, workwear, equipment for your workplace, etc. Now, if a single item exceeds 952 euros, then the cost of the item will be automatically depreciated over the period of the usage. For example, we select the drop down menu and let's say we had a mobile phone. It was from Samsung and the cost was 700 euros. Chances are that the tax office will ask you for an invoice. If you do not have the invoice, there's no harm in providing an expense, even if you do not have an invoice for that purchase. If the finance arm asks for a proof, and you do not have that proof and are unable to provide it then finance amp is simply going to ignore that expense if you have multiple entries simply click new entry and add whatever is appropriate if not then simply click delete entry in this section we are going to provide the travel costs to and from work or your home office now the tax office accepts a flat rate of 30 cents per kilometer between your house and your workplace regardless of how much expenses were incurred holidays and sick leaves are automatically going to be deducted from the number of working days for each job that you had you need to fill out here we are going to put in our home address and the workplace address here one thing needs to be mentioned if you lived in multiple addresses while having a same job then you can provide whatever address you want in the home address field if you had multiple jobs then as i mentioned before you'll need to provide multiple entries for those jobs in this section we're going to provide from which date till which date we work and how many days did we work we had any holidays business travel sick days anything at all in which we did not go to our workplace we're going to put in those days here for example in general most people get at least 29 holidays in the year and if you are sick for let's say 10 days in a year then we are going to put in 39 days here last year was an exception many people did home office if you did a home office then you can provide those days here so let's say for an example we did 25 days in the year 2020 in the last section if you use public transport then you can provide this option here if your expenses for public transport were higher than the flat rate calculated then you should add the cost if it's not then the software will automatically see whichever is in your favor once you put in that cost simply click save and continue after that we come to additional costs section here we can put in any costs related to children any household services that you used any training workshop or seminars any equipment for your home office or workroom any work related relocation business travel double household other insurances donations medical costs private health and nursing care insurance anything that is related to your costs can be put in here now as i want to keep this video very general i will not go into each and every option but as an example i'm going to go in the children section now if you have any children you need to provide their name last name date of birth tax id number and the family benefits office or family and case then you need to provide your relationship to the child and after that you need to provide other parent their last address date of birth then you need to fill in whatever is suitable for you as i said i want to keep this video very general so i'm not going to go in each and every option that is available so fill in whatever additional costs you might have i would recommend looking into each and every option so that you can get an idea of what kind of costs you can get adjusted in your tax return or even sometimes it might help you jog up any lost memory and then you remember this xyz cost was there and i had totally forgotten about it 
But if you do not have any additional costs, simply click skip additional costs. Now we come to the final section. Here we're going to provide the data to where the tax office should return your tax refund. You need to give out your name, your IBAN number, your BIC and the financial institution or the name of the bank. Then you provide your tax ID. It should already be written in your loan store by Shinegung. If not, then you should have a document having your tax ID. This is the 11 digit ID that you usually get within a couple of days of registering in Germany. Then you provide your telephone number and any further information that you think was required but was not covered by Wundertax. Once you're satisfied, simply go to summary. If there are any errors within your tax declaration, Wundertax will give you an error. Then you need to correct the provided errors. Once you provide the correct information, you can simply click do summary. After providing the information for the Wunder Tax summary, now you will be prompted to pay the Wunder Tax fee. So as I mentioned, if you are using snfinance.wundertax.de, you will get a five euros discount. Once you pay this fee, you'll get a draft for your tax declaration. Simply check the draft if it has any errors or if anything is missing. If you think that there's no errors, then you need to simply click the checkbox declaring that the draft is correct and click submit tax declaration. After submitting the tax declaration, you should get a notice from the tax office within three to ten weeks here is an example of my tax declaration i submitted it on the 28th of march 2021 and i got a response within three weeks as i mentioned in the beginning of the video that i will be giving away a free tax return so all you have to do is to submit your tax return using my link snfinance.winotax.com after submitting your tax return successfully all you have to do is write down in the comments below that you used my link to submit the tax return successfully i will select one random comment and refund the fees here is a video that i think that you'll really like a lot so thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video bleib gesund